Hey chatters, back here again to do the second, I guess the second lesson in Obsidian. We're going to keep this really simple and straightforward and little bite-sized pieces because it can get a little bit overwhelming and so I don't want you to get overwhelmed and miss out on all the fun. So just as a reminder, we did a lot last time. We downloaded Obsidian and we looked at a few things like how you can create a new note, new folder, what a note looks like, the importance of headings, and then these backlinks, these double brackets, as well as tags to help connect your information. <laughs> we, have, we have two here. Today, what we're going to do is keep it simple. I'm going to show you a couple more quick things around navigation as well as the canvas feature before we start getting into the daily node and all that kind of fun stuff. The next thing I wanted to talk about is we went through this sidebar, but we didn't go through this side sidebar. This is where uh, a lot of the, the fun is going to happen, especially once we get into the plugins. But just to help you navigate, we have the switcher. This is just going to help you switch to a different note. We have the graph view, which is once this gets filled up, you're going to see a lot more connections and dots. We have the canvas, which I'm going to go through in a minute. We have your daily note opening today's daily note. That's going to be our next session, what we're going to talk about. So for now, I'm going to leave that more or less open. But the idea here is you're taking notes every day. It's dated. And this is something you're going to be probably interacting with the most. We have templates. Again, we're going to go over how to do templates in the next session, but the idea, as you probably understand it, is you can create all these templates for the various things you need to do so that you don't have to be typing that in every single time. And lastly, up here is our command palette. There's two ways to get to the command palette. It's either just by clicking it right over here, or it has a hotkey where if you do control P, it'll bring it up as well. Now, this is going to get a little bit getting used to for sure, because you interact with Obsidian a lot through the command palette. So this is where once you get plugins as well as everything that's already in here, it's just a little bit of a quicker way to do certain things. You can export things to PDF. You can go to a specific tab. You can open another vault. You can change it between light and dark mode. You can change your theme. All of these things. It's like literally everything that you can do. But instead of going to like file or edit somewhere up here, there's just this quick little command palette. So this is how you're going to be interacting with Obsidian to do the fun things in a lot of the cases. So if you ever are like, I don't know what to do, just open the command palette and type in a few letters for the thing you're trying to do. And it's probably going to show up. It can get confusing, especially once you start adding the plugins, but you just want to get used to, I'm going to open the command palette for whatever I want to do. If it's not here on the side for me to do. Now that we kind of understand the command palette, there's one more thing I just want to mention which is hotkeys. So you see when I opened the command palette, it actually has over here certain keys. These are your hotkeys. So you just do control and let's do control comma. And here we go. It's brought up our settings. Now down here is where the settings is. You can see it right here. But again, if you just want to go faster, just control comma. Here we are, the settings, which is exactly what I want to talk about next. This might feel a little overwhelming. You have all these options. Don't worry. We're going to go through it together. So the first is just the typical editor. You're probably not going to want to change anything in here. You can, obviously, if you want, you're going to want to go through it to make sure it's fitting to your preferences. But it's default for a reason. You're probably not going to change anything in here. Files and links. A similar thing, like you're not really going to be doing anything in here. The only thing you might want to do is the default location for new notes, depending on how you set things up. But you might want to pick a certain folder where you want all new notes to go no matter what, like an inbox or something like that, so that you can do it later and put it where you want. Definitely want to make sure the Wikilinks is, uh, is connected. This is around if you put links or images it's gonna create that markdown link or image so you don't have to do the weird little brackets and parentheses you're not really going to want to change anything in this one appearance again this is totally your preference darker light mode you want to pick a different color for things i love purple and black so uh, i'm all for it the fonts it's all this kind of stuff again 
probably not going to change things. Here's the hotkeys. And so you saw before, we already have some set hotkeys for everything, or not everything, a lot of the things. And this is going to get more important as you start getting plugins for the specific things you're doing. But the idea here, I didn't do this till later because I wanted to figure out what my workflow was and what I actually needed. But you might be the type of person who's, no, I, I know exactly what I want. Either way, at some point when you feel ready, when you feel like there are things that you use more often than most, you're going to want to start setting up your hotkeys just to make things quicker and more effective for you. And it's really easy. Again, you just go to settings, hotkeys. And you just hit this plus button and then you just hit the key that you want. We'll do control slash. And so now whenever I do control slash, we're going to get, be able to do an embed. And then if you want to just restore to default, you just click that button and it'll go blank again. Another thing you might want to use, cause this, this happened to me is I'm like, oh, I totally forget what I said is the hotkey for this thing. Or, or I doubled up on hotkeys. You can go to this filter and just go to, for example, assign by me. And you'll see that I have zero hotkeys assigned by me right now because this is a new vault. But the idea is that whatever you assign, let's actually go back and I'll do this again. Now that I go to assign by me, this shows up here. So you can figure out the ones you actually created for yourself. Next is core plugins. I go through this yourself and see what you care about. One you might want to put on is this properties view to show the metadata for your files. We'll get into properties in a future video. Properties, generally, they're just the metadata. The time it was created, the tags that are associated with it, whatever those kind of properties might be. You can create slash commands if you want. You can create a presentation, sync your files through Obsidian Sync. We'll talk about that in the future. That's a paid thing and all this other stuff. You turn it on, turn it off, whatever you want. Now, we're going to do a lot on community plugins, so I'm not going to go over this now, but the idea is think of it like the app store for Obsidian, where there's a lot of different apps you can download and incorporate into your workflow. And then each of the core plugins, the guys that were referenced here, they each have sort of their own little thing. So backlinks, show backlinks and document by default when opening new tabs, Canvas, which we'll talk about in a minute, the command palette, your daily notes, recovering files, composing notes, what we want the page preview to look like, quick switcher, and your templates. That's pretty much it. You're not really going to change much in here at this point, but go through it. Again, this is all about your preferences. When you have some time, when you've gotten into it a little bit, go through these again and see if there's things that will just make your life easier. Now we're going to finish this video on the canvas. So you can get the canvas uh, right here, or again, if you just want to do control P to bring up the command palette, type in canvas and you'll see it shows up here. And you're like, what the heck is this? What is this canvas? It's just like a Miro board or any sort of workflow board, but super simplified. I, I actually love it because it's so simple. So all you got to do, if you want to make a workflow, for example, you just double click anywhere. Bam. Here we got a little, a nice little box to write in. We'll do workflow and then you can trash it. You can change the color. Uh, you can zoom in or you can edit it. So we'll do workflow one and then let's double click down here. We'll keep it purple. We'll do workflow two. And then here you go. You just click here where there's that little dot. You drag down your nice little arrow and then you can even do stuff with this arrow. So for example, you can type in it. If you double click, you say process, whatever you want there. And you can also create the arrow. So you can go bi-directional, for example, or you can do no direction. And then you can obviously remove this label too. And that's pretty much it. So this is all, actually, I haven't even looked at some of this stuff. So <laughs> uh, drag to add card. So you can also just add a card like this. Drag to add note from vault. So for example, you can take a note from your vault. You'll drag it there. Let's click that. And I'll just bring the note in here. So then you can connect. Okay, we want, this is the exp longer explanation. You can also use backlinks and tags in here. So for example, if I wanted to, instead of calling this workflow one, I wanted to call it, I've now added it. So that will say first note. Now this will connect to first note. So you can quickly get there. 
I'm sure this is media. Yeah. So this is uh, dragging in some media. We don't have any media, but let's say you have images or uh, pictures or whatever. If you drag that in, it's going to bring up the search bar. You'll search for it and you'll click and drag it right in there. So that's pretty much it for this video. Again, I really want to keep this simple for you all and straightforward. Next time we're going to get into the daily node. That's really the meat of Obsidian where we're really going to want to spend the most time. So we'll be going over that next. But for now, my call to action is play around with some of the settings, go in there, look at it, see what you want, see if there's things you want to turn on or off, and play around a little bit with this canvas. Just create a workflow or a mind map or whatever you think is going to be helpful to you. Maybe even start thinking about how you want to organize uh, this thing in, in a mind map kind of way. I hope that was helpful, chatters, and I will see you at the next lesson.